Hey everyone, I'm Danica Fine with Snowflake, back again to share a brand new Apache Iceberg release with you. As usual, the Iceberg community is hard at work adding new features, improving existing functionality, and preparing for the upcoming v3 spec. So to keep track of the most important aspects of this release, we'll split this update video into a few different parts. Core changes and new features, spec work including the upcoming v3 spec, and deprecations and removals. So let's dive beneath the surface and see what you can expect with Apache Iceberg 1.8. First up, important core changes and new features. And we'll focus on a commonly used function here, rewrite data files. In this release, you'll see the introduction of a delete ratio and the ability to configure it when running this Spark action. For users of merge on read row level operations, this means more efficient compaction. The new delete ratio sets an upper bound on the number of rows in a data file that can be deleted before the file is considered for compaction, meaning that rewrite data files will now prioritize rewriting data files that are mostly deleted records. This next change seeks to remove potential deadlock when using Parallel Iterable. Haven't heard of Parallel Iterable? Well, it's used in a number of places across Iceberg for query planning. For some additional context, the Parallel Iterable enforces an upper bound on the number of elements that can be added to a queue and buffered for reading. But this upper bound could cause a deadlock in high concurrency systems. To avoid this deadlock, we now check the size of the queue before starting to read a file and yield if the queue is at capacity. One thing to keep in mind with this change is that when the task is added to the queue, the entire file is now loaded into a read-ahead queue instead of reading the file element by element. Because of this, the existing memory constraints on the queue have been loosened. The community is working on a more effective solution to the deadlock that doesn't provide so many memory trade-offs. Next up, we're changing how delete files are set up by default for Spark. When you write delete files, you have two main options for how they apply to existing data files. They're either partition scoped, meaning that a delete file can potentially apply to multiple files across a partition, or they're file scoped, meaning that a delete file is mapped one-to-one -to, -one to a data file. It used to be the case that partition scoped files were more efficient as it meant fewer delete files overall, but recent changes make file scope deletes more efficient. In particular, minor compaction made it so that existing delete files could be merged with new deletes during Spark writes. To take advantage of these efficiency gains in Iceberg version 1.8, the default delete file granularity in Spark has been changed to be file-based. You may recall from the previous Iceberg release that rewrite table path was introduced as a new Iceberg action in Spark to help rewrite a table's metadata files to a staging directory along with some helpful proposed configurations. But you may also recall that the release only concluded an interface for this action. In version 1.8, you'll find both an implementation as well as the added procedure. With this addition, users can finally achieve the move table functionality that they've been asking for. And our final follow-up from the 1.7 release is with the Spark Action Compute Table Stats. The Iceberg community implemented Compute Table Stats in the previous version to collect NDVs from columns and write them to Puffin files, making the stats available to any engines that can read Puffin files, like Spark or Trino. This is comparable to running Analyze in Trino or SQL. With this release, we're finally adding the procedure so that users can make use of this new functionality. Now for a handful of minor changes that should still improve your Iceberg quality of life. First up, a change to help tidy up our old partition specs. Specifically, this new functionality allows us to clean up partition specs that are no longer referenced in our manifest files, and conveniently, it does so during the expire snapshots procedure. This is extremely useful for folks who want to reduce the size of their metadata.json. In the future, we'll also support removing and cleaning up unused schemas. Next, an update to fast append operations. For some additional context, when fast append is enabled, Iceberg will generate brand new manifests for new data files rather than merging new data file entries into existing manifests. You can think about this as merge on read mode for manifests versus merge append mode, which is akin to copy on write. Fast append is the default mode for Spark and is faster to write, but as you might suspect, it's slightly slower on read. So what does this mean for this release? Well, fast append never allowed for writing multiple partition specs at a time, and because of this, it didn't support writing multiple new manifest files at once. This update introduces that functionality, modeled on how it was handled in merge append. This opens up the ability for writers to quickly append to multiple partition specs at the same time. And our final update for this section relates to merging schemas. The original design of merge schema allowed for type widening. So when new data was wider than the existing type in the schema, for example, going from an int to a long, the change was allowed. But it would throw an error when trying to narrow a type. So the opposite, trying to change from a long to an int. This has been fixed, and now, when new data of our narrower type is written, 
The schema is left as is with the wider type, and the data itself is widened. With that, we can move on to more future-focused changes with updates to the spec, including implementations of features for the upcoming v3 spec. First up, default values. I'm excited to say that the Iceberg community is continuing to build out support for default values in this release, adding the ability for default values in Parquet and also in Spark vectorized reads. This means quite a lot for users. Because of the design of Iceberg and schema evolution, you can set two different types on defaults in v3 tables. First, you can set a value to be used in place of null for existing rows. This means you can take a previously optional column and make it required by specifying the value that should replace null in past records. The second property can then be used to define what value to use in the future if a column is missing for a new record. This means you can have an optional or required column that will automatically use a value for new rows if it's not specified. This is currently only implemented for Parquet and Avro file readers, so this can't yet be used with tables that have org files. And our final forward-looking update comes with deletion vectors. If you haven't been following this with the Iceberg community, they've been undergoing a huge effort to improve the handling of position deletes. As a refresher, position delete files are Parquet files, which specify where deletes are located using a path and position ordinal. These are now being updated to be delete vectors, which are stored as roaring bitmaps within Puffin files, where each delete vector will only apply to a single data file. Updates to metadata allow readers to directly map a vector and its offset within the Puffin file to its relevant data file without requiring the delete vector to exist in its own standalone file, meaning that we're reducing the number of small delete files overall. Additionally, there can only ever be a single delete vector for a given data file, again, speeding up planning and application of deletes. And with those exciting updates out of the way, it's time for deprecations and removals. We only have a couple this time around. The first removal might sound a little bit scary. We're removing the entire Hive runtime module from Iceberg. This doesn't mean that the Hive runtime module is gone. Rather, it's now natively supported by the Apache Hive project. So this is less of a removal and more of a graduation of sorts. And finally, an update to the set statistics update method. The method's input parameters are being changed to no longer include snapshot ID as snapshot ID was already contained within the other input parameter statistics file. So there you have it, some of the best and most relevant changes that were released as part of the Apache Iceberg 1.8 release. If you're curious to learn more about these changes or see what else made it into the 1.8 release, check out the release notes or take a look at the GitHub repository. And remember, we've barely scratched the surface here. There's so much great work being done by the Iceberg community. I'm excited for all the new features and future developments coming our way, and I hope you are too. See you next time.